G'day guys and welcome to another Blender Buzz tutorial. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this scene in Blender. Um, it's not really actually as much so much a scene as it is a tutorial about rigging and animating a wheel. Now I'm actually going to show you how to an, uh, how to model the wheel just in case um, some of you don't have a wheel to um, to animate or rig. Because uh, I know a lot of people would probably come to this video because they already have a car model or something and they just want to add um, rigging to it. So let's get started. I'm just going to quickly show you what it looks like. Um, we have a wheel, a rig, and I'm going to animate it. And one thing I've decided to add in this that I didn't really want to do at first because I'm kind of new to dynamic paint displacement. But I'm going to show you guys how to quickly set up displacement. So when your wheel, and this is really neat, when your wheel goes over a surface, it is actually going to leave an impression in the ground, which is really cool. And there aren't at all a whole lot of tutorials on Blender on how to do this with displacement. And a lot of them are in depth and not very clear. So I'm going to show you guys quickly how we set it up. But do keep in mind that this is not that's not a primary focus of this tutorial. The primary focus of this tutorial is to show you guys how to rig, set up a rig for a wheel, and how to apply that to your wheel. And I'm also going to show you how to animate and displace as a bonus. So um, yeah, let's get right into the tutorial, and it'll be really fun. Okay, so I'm going to get started by opening up a new scene in Blender. I'm going to go ahead um, X and to delete everything once it's selected. I'm going to um, also enable my screencast keys. This allows you guys to see what I'm doing. And now I have an empty blank scene. And just in case any of you guys don't actually have a wheel on you right now to model, I mean to rig, um, some of you might already have come here because you already have a model like a card you'd like to rig the wheels. So I'm just going to quickly show you guys um, how to model a quick and simple wheel. So to get started, I'm going to go into my front orthographic view. I'm going to go add mesh and I'm going to add a cylinder and now that I have my cylinder created I'm going to go um, with it selected I'm going to go RX90 that's going to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis and then SY and I'm going to size it into about here I think that's the thickness I want go into edit mode and I'm going to go to my edge select select this guy here and this guy and I'm going to go control B to bevel it and, and pull it in and pull out the mouse and then middle mouse wheel like so and to add loops so I'm gonna go something like that it looks good and select everything s y a little bit like so that's about the thickness I want it looks good enable smooth shading and I'm gonna go ahead now and um, to add some threads to this the simple way to do that is so hold in shift alt and then select these segments like so so I'm selecting them here. Just going around, selecting these guys. It's real quick, simple, like so. And I'm going to go here, and this is very important. Over here, we don't want it, our pivot to be um, median. We want it to be individual origins. And now I'm going to go extrude and pull it like so. And then size on the Y a little bit to bring it out. And then E again, and then pull it out little bit and then size on the Y bring it out a little bit and then with that all selected I'm going to go W and just click smooth once like so and now I'm just going to go ahead and press control 1 that's going to give it a subdivision of 1 go back into edit mode select this face and um, actually to make it easier I'm just going to mirror this I'm going to go control R in the middle to add a loop cut with that selected I'm going to press V select this side by control L and that'll select all of this now because it's its own little segment and go X delete vertices I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna give it a, a mirror modifier and set this to Z now the reason it's not doing it on the X like it should be is because we haven't applied the road um, the rotation but earlier when I did it, it gave me some problems so I'm not gonna worry about that so just leave it to Z even though it's not accurate like it should be it's fine for this and then I'm gonna go ahead select this um, Go my face select select this face here i'm going to x um extrude s in a little bit go back to median point actually and then x delete faces and then I'm go grab this again and extrude size in like so and then shift duplicate this size it in a little bit extrude size extrude size and then extrude size and then just face then I'm going to go ahead and select this and extrude it like so a little bit and then take that loop double G just to 
edge slide it a little bit and double G to edge slide this guy a little bit and then smooth that as well and then go into edit mode grab this extrude Y move it in a little bit and then extrude size like so and then this guy is now uh, um, the cap on the thing select this guy because it's a separate part select the edge here ext um, sorry extrude on the Y in like so and then control L select it and we can see this is if we move it away here this is what the part looks like and that's what the inside there looks like so this is now the um, the hub of the wheel and there we have it we have a nice little wheel made and it's kind of like a um, like a heavy-duty little wheel like you'd see on um, on like maybe a small quad bike or something anyway that's done now so I'm gonna go ahead make this cycle render. just make a material I'm gonna call this um, rubber and I'm gonna in my settings here make it a little bit black so I can see it's been applied and I'm gonna go um, create a new material and call this um, shine that's just the shiny parts I'm gonna go in here that hub is selected so I'm gonna go assign and I'm just gonna make the viewport color a little bit gray so I can see it's been applied and that is awesome now I have my finished wheel and um, we're ready to start rigging so I'm gonna go to my front orthographic view for this and now let us start okay so one of the first things I'm gonna do is go to my um, enable my 3d cursor mode I'm gonna go shift s cursor to center make sure the cursor is in the center go to my front orthographic add armature single bone now I'm gonna go to my click on this little guy here and under display I'm gonna enable x-ray I'm also gonna enable names and axes cool now I'm gonna to go to my edit mode select um, with my cursor in the center it's in the center I'm gonna select this bone go shift duplicate R X nine zero and all that's done now is shift duplicated this bone it's rotated it on the X and it's perfectly 90 degrees to this bone which is what we want and now I'm going to go ahead and with my cursor still in the center I'm going to go ahead and press shift A and that's just created a bone and not pressing anything I'm going to go control Y90 actually sorry just undo that Con um, R Y minus nine zero. That's it. There we go. Now I'm going to select this bone, move it this way, forward like so. And what we have here now is a bone that goes up, one that goes up to the side, and this one here, which is going to be the one with, that determines where the wheel points. And then we're going to create one main bone, which all of this is going to be connected to. So that's going to be in the top of the hierarchy. So I'm just going to go ahead, select this bone, shift duplicate, move it up. Um, select this bottom point cursor to select it and then select this and go R Y minus nine zero and also size it up a bit so we know it's the main bone move it up and there we have it these are our bones essentially and all I'm also going to do is I'm going to select everything all the bones I'm going to go control N and I'm going to go global plus Z axis and all that's done now is to put all the Z axis up like so and that's what we want and now we're ready to go on to our next step which is adding constraints um, also I think I've forgotten to do this we also just need to do some parenting here quickly it's real easy all I'm gonna do is you select everything select this bone here then select this bone by holding in shift so this one first then this one then I'm gonna go control B and keep offset and I'm also gonna go ahead and select this bone here and this guy here and then holding in shift as well the last one is going to be this one control p keep offset and now what we have here is a hierarchy system so if i go to my pose mode we can see here that this bone is the main bone it is in the top it's the alpha bone and then i got these two little ones here which are parented to this they obey this one and this guy here is parented sorry this one is parented to this bone so if i move this bone you can see the others don't move just this little one moves with it and that is perfect if that's what you have this is done and you're ready to go on to the constraints so the constraints are real easy so let's get started with that um, okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select 
this bone here, bone 2, and then I'm going to select, holding and shift, select this bone here, okay, bone 1, and then go um, to my constraints here, you can see here's this constraints thing, I'm going to go add bone constraint and then go transformation, okay, and for some reason it didn't automatically add bone 2, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this little box here, and I'm just going to go armature, and I'm going to select bone number 2, which is this bone here, okay? So that's the bone we have there. I'm also going to go extrapolate, I'm going to click rotate here, I'm going to make this 6 for now, because I think that's what's going to work. I tried this previously, minus 6 down the bottom on my Y, I'm going to make this rotation, um, make the top one location, this is very important, so this is location, and this is, oops, actually undo this, make that zero, make this one zero, just go to your location right here, and just add six at the top for the min, and for the max we're going to go minus six, like so. And then the bottom we have rotation, and on your Y we want to make this three, six, zero, and on your max we want to make it minus three, six, zero, and we're going to make this local with parent, and we're going to make this one local space. And I think that is all we need to do. So if I move this bone here, quickly go to my medium point, voila, this bone now rotates. And that is actually all we have to do. It was really that simple setting up the constraints. So what I'm going to do now, we might have to come in here and fine tweak this, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to back into object mode, go into my front orthographic view, select everything and move it up so this wheel sits on top of that red line like so then I'm also going to add a plane quickly cursor to center add a plane s so I'm going to go size on the x move it like so to about the length of the um, floor and I'm also going to go ahead and select this armature and the bones, the bones and the wheel, go to my front orthographic view and move it back to here. Just so where it starts over there. And now we can see we have our like surface here and we have our wheel. And I'm also going to go select this, just size it on the Y just a little bit. Voila, and there we have it. We have our wheel and we can now come in here and I'll show you how it works. So I'm going to select my armature, go to my pose mode, go into front view, so if I select this now, and I move it, oops, okay, we have to also parent the wheel quickly. So in my, in my pose mode with my armature, I'm just going to select the wheel, and then holding in shift, select this bone here, and then go control P, and I'm going to go with bone. Awesome. So we're going to my front view now, I select the main bone, and I move it, our wheel turns. It is just that easy. Really simple little rig to make. And if I rotate it as well, like that, you can see our wheel still turns. So it is a perfect little rig. So I'm going to go select A, um, A select everything, Alt G, Alt R to put everything back into place. And we are now ready to animate. So I'm going to go to my front view of the graphic, go to my wireframe so I can see my floor here. And I'm also going to go ahead and um, hmm, maybe go to my object and um, to make this a bit more interesting, so we can maybe add some displacement, I'm going to select my wheel and my rig, move it down a little bit into the ground like so, move it back, so it's got some depth to it. Now go select my armature, go into pose mode, go into front view mode, and I'm going to go open up another tab here, I'm going to make this dope sheet, move it up like so, and I'm going to make sure I'm in my first frame, so shift um, left error button will do that automatically <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and select everything in the scene and go I and then location rotation and you can see it added these keyframes then I'm going to go to key to frames 250 on the end and I'm going to move all of this to over here to the end and then I'm going to go I with everything selected location rotation so if I go to my go through this now you can see here I'm just going to quickly play it, let's quickly play it, you're going to see here our wheel moves. 
Now it kind of starts slow and then it speeds up then slows down again. It's because this is not set to linear. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go T and I'm going to set this to linear. So if I go, so if I go here, you can see it now moves with a consistent speed. And that's really cool. We have now have an animated wheel. And um, one thing, like I said in the beginning, one thing I didn't originally want to do, but I'll show you guys how to do quickly, is how to make displacement. So as this wheel is going to be going over the surface here, it's going to be making displacement in the ground, which is going to be really cool. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly grab this here, minimize this um, window, go to my object mode, just um, press Alt A to stop the animation, go to my um, front orthographic view, and actually select the floor here we need to subdivide that so before we subdivide it i'm just going to go in here add some loop cuts so because we want to make these squares okay that's that's good we've got some squares then i select everything w subdivide w subdivide just subdivide it to about there that's good enough and then i'm also going to go ahead and just go to my um, modifiers and add a subdivision surface and now we can um, go to the next stage, which is dynamic painting. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, so um, the way we set up the dynamic paint is super, super easy. All I'm going to do is select my plane. I'm going to go to here to my dynamic settings, go um, enable dynamic paint right here. And I'm going to go make sure the canvas is selected. And I'm also going to go ahead and add canvas. And I'm going to go ahead and instead of having this on paint, I'm going to make this displace. And I'm also going to go ahead and enable anti-aliasing. And that's about it. And then I'm going to go add another one. So press the little plus here. And that's automatically going to add a surface. And I'm not quite sure what that's for yet. I'm just going to enable anti-aliasing. And down here, we can see these two options. Now, I've already added... Um, if, if these are red, just um, press these little buttons here. You'll see a little plus and a little plus. I've already done that, so I have these two here. So if these are red, just press these guys here, and when you go to your um, vertex settings here, you're going to see under vertex colors, you have these two options, okay? But that doesn't really matter now. Then I'm going to go ahead, select a wheel, go here, I'm going to go to my dynamic settings. I've already added a dynamic paint, so for example, I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to make this brush, and I'm going to go add canvas, and that's about it. I think when you make this mesh plus volume proximity, it does a better job. But I'm just going to leave it at mesh volume. I think it's fine. And look at this now. This is the magic. So if I go zoom in here, look what happens when you press Alt A. Voila. We have displacement into our geometry. It's not just bump map. It's actual displacement. And um, this is going to be slow because your computer actually has to cache this in. And by the way, I have to make this. Um, this is very important. I should have said it at the start. It will not work. It will not run this cache. It will give you an error and you won't see some of the settings if you do not save your blend file. It will not do anything unless you saved your blend file. So if you're not getting what I got and it's not working, it's because you haven't saved your blend file. So make sure your blend file is saved somewhere on your PC. And I'm just gonna grab this plane quickly, enable smooth shading. And yeah, there you can see we have our animation. Now, um, if you want to um, render this out, that's up to you. I'm only showing how to animate a wheel you know, this, the tutorial was about how to rig and animate. I'm not going to go ahead and make a final animation because it's up to you guys to decide what you want to use this for. But there you have it, essentially. We have a nice rolling wheel that is make, leaving tracks behind. So if I go to my perspective, we can see it better. There we have it. Um, we have a wheel that is making displacement. So... Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. And um, I'll see you guys again for another video. So yeah.